our, ourselves at this point. And uh, most of our focus has been on uh, the development of younger guys and the fundamentals that they need to get better at their position, like it always is at this point in the year, uh, before we actually get into the, uh, <coughs> the game planning of, uh, of, uh, of Missouri, which we just basically you know, had started uh, this, pre uh, this previous week. So uh, the, next, the next three or four practices we have, we'll have a, a segment built in. Uh, we'll, we'll begin to prepare, uh, you know, like we normally would, uh, for, you know, for our opponent, and at the same time, take uh, a little bit of time out of each practice to uh, work with the younger guys and uh, develop them uh, the way that we feel they need to be developed. So that's kind of where we're at, and, and uh, I can, we can talk a little bit about uh, a little bit about Missouri. Uh, they're they're a very good football team. Obviously, uh, they're built on speed defensively. Um, I. Uh, I would describe, you know, I describe them, uh, you know, as a very athletic team, uh, especially their, you know, their, their front seven. All their linebackers uh, can can really run. Their DNs are uh, are extremely talented. I think, uh, you know, right now one of the things, if you look at them from a statistical standpoint, the things that you notice about them uh, most are, you know, they're giving up a little more than two touchdowns a game, but they are really stingy in the red zone. You know, not only in allowing people to score, but you know, letting people score uh, touchdowns. It's probably the lowest that I can remember ever seeing, uh, you know, since, you know, we've played anybody here at Iowa. So, they, you know, we've got to make sure we've got a great game plan for them, you know, you know inside, uh, inside the red zone. But they're a well-coached team. They'll bring pressure a lot of different ways. And, uh, and again, that's you know, part of the reason they've got 38 sacks on the season as well. Um, and uh, you know they, they take pride in, uh, in, in, uh, in really playing hard. So, what are those? What are those thirty-eight sacks? Tell you what, what do you need to be sharp on to, to prevent that from being a sack fest? Well, number one, you need to know where the blitz is coming from. Yeah, I think that's that's critical. Uh, and 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 you have to, you know, in order to, if you know where the blitz is coming from, then we've got a chance to get it stopped. And, you know, Rick can either change a protection or get us into a, you know, uh, into a protection that can be better for us. Um, you know, whether it's a five-man, six-man, seven-man, whatever, you know, it doesn't much matter, but it, it, depending on the situation. But, um, you know, part of, that ha part of that has come in the red zone. I'd say a good portion of that has come in the red zone and uh, in, in third down types of situations, especially uh, where they'll, uh, you know, they'll get after you pretty good. But... You know, you know, we've uh, we've got to be fundamentally sound. They, you know, they uh, they are a, a quick team off the edge. They'll even substitute um, uh, where they'll take their their speed guys and put them inside, and match them up against guys that normally aren't matched up uh, against people with that kind of speed. To be perfectly honest with you, which really can cause some uh, some issues at times. They use their hands very well, and, and they have uh, you know they have they have uh, you know. You know, great feet. So, and they and they uh, they'll, they're not afraid to play a cover zero or or cover one. Uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, try to run with run with you. And you know, in their conference, they've run with some of the best athletes that there are in college football. They're they're not afraid of that by uh, by any means. And that's what they practice against every day as well. So, uh, Ken, is this team uh, 